And I'm now going to hand over to Liz, um, who's going to lead us um, through Baswa's session on co-production. Thank you very much. Oh, fantastic. Thanks very much, Philippa. It's great to be here as part of Social Work England World Social Work Week. Um, on behalf of Baswa, we'll do some introductions. Um, what I'm going to do, first of all, is I'm going to share my screen and just double check that you can see um, the slides that we're going to be using here. As Philippa said, we're going to be using something um, interactive called Mentimeter. So the presentation that I'm sharing will be through Mentimeter. So I'm hoping that you can see that now. Um, I'm just going to ask someone if they can see, just let me know on the screen um, that we've got co-production with people with lived experience and social workers, the past, present and future. Can someone just indicate they can see that just so I know we're OK? okay. Thank you. Yeah, fine. Oh, brilliant. That's great. Thank you very much. OK, so um, as Philip was just explaining at the minute at the beginning, um, we're having difficulty getting one of our co-facilitators, Graham Price, into the room at the moment. So um, we're hoping that he's going to be able to join us um, shortly. We're just on with the technical side of things. So apologies for the slight delay um, in getting going this morning. Um, but let's do some introductions. So I'm Liz Howard. I'm what's called a professional officer with the British Association of Social Workers. And I work for the England team and I'm a social worker. So Resh, can you introduce yourself, please? Uh, yeah, so I'm Rashma Patel. I am someone who experiences services throughout my life from birth to adulthood. Um, I've been a member of uh, the adult group for about four years and I work very closely with the Baswa steering group um, to enhance their policy making decisions. Great. Thanks, Resh. Mark, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. I'm sorry, I'm Mark Lawrence. Um, I've been with Badger for four years also, and I sit on two of um, the order, um, the organisation subgroup to help to help social workers do things better. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Mark. And I'll just introduce Graham, even though he's not here. Graham Price, who we hope is going to be joining us, is also a person with lived experience who has been a carer and he also experiences sight loss <coughs> and has, a, has experience of being a care experience person as well in his um, childhood. And we're really hoping that Graham um, can join us through the session, but, but uh, maybe not. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. OK. So just a, a reminder on the housekeeping, if everybody that's not speaking can stay muted, um, that would really, really help just to minimise the noise in the background. Due to time constraints today, um, we are going to be monitoring the chat throughout the session um, and there'll be time for questions and answers when we go into the workshop breakout rooms, which will be after our presentation in about 20 minutes time. Um, we are hoping to use the information that you share with us today as well to reflect really and to learn and develop our approach to co-production um, at Basworth. So we're really looking forward to hearing your ideas later on in the workshop. OK, so just wanted to give you a quick summary of how the session will run today. Obviously, we have started slightly late, so we, we may be um, trying to, to make up some time later. So we'll start with a quick icebreaker, which will involve Mentimeter and Resh will introduce that. We've got some information that we want to share with you about um, the work that we've been doing at Basworth so far around co-production. Then we'll go into breakout rooms. There'll be a room that stays with me here and a room that goes with um, Resh and Mark, and that'll all be done automatically behind the scenes, so you won't have to do anything on that. I think potentially we might need to look at 15 minutes for that exercise now rather than 20, but we'll just see how we go. We'll then all come back together. We'll share some ideas um, from each of the groups. We'll then have um, another um, opportunity to use Mentimeter as a closing exercise, and that'll take us right up to the end of the session. OK, so next slide, and that's over to you, Mark. Just on mute there, Mark, I think. And sorry again. Um, so today's session is to help you understand our journey as um, an organisation, uh, working so productively with people like myself, to clarify the contribution and value of that work across social work organisations and to contribute to what happens in the future when I'm working with people like myself. Thanks, Mark. Next slide. 
Okay, so as Liz um, alluded to, we're going to go straight into an icebreaker. Um, and what we want to do is just gauge where everyone's at. So when was the last time you co-produced something with either a person or a community? For this exercise, okay, you can think about co-production in its widest context. It could even be with a family member or you know, a friend. It doesn't necessarily have to be in an organisation. So just to clarify, when did you last produce when was the last time you could produce something with a person, family or community in the last week, in the last six months, um, in the last year or never or haven't done yet? What you need to do is type in the www.menti.com and use the code 85552277. Just give people a bit longer to uh, to come in on that. Okay, has everyone had the chance to to have a go? Just give it another few uh, seconds. Be great to hear from everyone in the room on this. Okay. Resh, I think we can just take that as the, the final result at the moment, if you want to. OK, so we can see that from the 12 people that did manage to get onto the Mentimeter, um, there's, yeah, there's five people that did it last week. Um, I'm not necessarily at this stage going to ask whether it was um, family, friends and organisation, but you can see there's a vast difference from how many people feel that like they've worked in co-production over the last week and one person has um, said that they've not done it yet. Well, hopefully in this um, workshop today, we'll um, describe how we've worked in co-production and that might give you some ideas to take forward as well as, as learning from you. Mm -hmm. Next slide. Thanks very much, Resh. That's great. And it's great to see that um, five people have um, been looking at co-production in the last week. So we're really looking forward to people's ideas, as Resh was saying, in the workshop. So moving us on then, I'm going to cover um, this slide, which um, Graham was going to be uh, talking about. Sorry, Mark, you're going to do this one and I'm going to do the next one. So this is slide five. Mark, yes. if you want to come in. So what what the what the one what you said um in the outside um shows that we can make better progress together we don't work well enough together yet uh, and we are in a difficult context and i think um we at that job would certainly agree with, <laughs> with a lot of people on that i have done co-production at the service user but also as a professional and I, I certainly had those experiences too. That's great. Thanks very much, Mark. Can I okay. can I just can I just add to that one based on yes. comments? I think what Graham wanted to say also was it's important to note that we started with a blank sheet of paper um, where members met as equal partners valuing the comp valuing the contributions each made and developed 
a social charter for social workers. That was with a, another a user-led organisation. Mm -hmm. The charter was launched and in the next 18 months, well, since then, we've been um, advertising, promoting the charter for working with adult um, people who experience services. And in the next 18 months, um, we've continued this work and been to Birmingham, Manchester and Belfast alongside Baswa to represent people who experience services. That's a very quick summary of what Graham was going to say. Thanks very much, um, Rhett and Mark. And I'm going to cover um, the next slide here, which is also something that Graham um, was going to contribute. And this is really all about, so we've been thinking about our approach, thinking about how the charter was developed and how that supported us to start to think about how we needed to work with people with lived <coughs> experience from their perspective. So this is all about, this slide's really all about what's been happening so far. What have we done since then? Um, and I think it's fair to say that, um, as an organisation, we've developed a policy document, which is currently called Service User and Care Involvement Framework. We have put forward some suggestions about renaming um, that document since uh, since it's came into existence. But as an organisation, we're currently working with a small number of people um, with lived experience. And that's something that we're wanting to very much look at. And that's been the kind of focus of the work over the last year. So in order to do that, um, there's been a, a small group of people um, that have been looking at particular aspects of work, um, you know, a task and finish group, really, to kind of think about, well, how are people with lived experience currently involved in, in the work of Baswa and what do we want that to look like going forward? Um, within one of the groups that um, Resh mentioned earlier and the group that I support and that Graham is also part of, in terms of the terms of reference for our adult social work group, We've got um, a very specific reference in there around inv the involvement of people with lived experience as part of that bigger group and also part of the subgroups that do other pieces of work. So for an example at the moment is something that Graham's been involved in uh, and Resh as well, which is around looking at hospital discharge and the discharge to assess policy and what the implications of that are at a national level for people with lived experience. There are other ways that people with lived experience are involved um, in the work of, of Baswa through what we call our thematic groups. The adult group is one of those. We've also found through our survey um, that we've done recently, which we're going to come on to talk about, that there is quite a bit of involvement across our branches. So branches are um, social workers in particular local areas that want to get together, that want to talk about, learn about different issues that might be happening for social work where they live. And we found that there's a lot of work going on with people with lived experience and carers in those local areas, which is really positive. OK, I'm going to move us on to the next slide. OK, so what we're aiming for. Mute. Hi. OK, that's me, isn't it, Liz? It's you, Rush. Uh, okay. Yeah. So, sorry. Um, no problem. Uh, background noise. No okay. problem. <laughs> okay, I think what is important to note that we have to recognise that Baswa is a membership organisation. It's not an organisation that necessarily directly serves people who experience services. So there was sort of a debate about um, who are Baswa people who experience services. Um, clearly, Baswa was set up for the needs of social workers, but indirectly also serves also serves um, as as we experience those services where social workers work. It was important to establish why we are working collaboratively with people with lived experiences, and for me that was really crucial because I just didn't quite understand why we were doing it. So we decided to use the four PIs framework as a good way to ensure that all the work that we do is relevant. The 4PI framework with lived experiences as national standards to ensure effective co-production and improve experiences of services and support. We recognise we are not there, but have started um, the grassroots work for ensuring that we are making an impact to the work of Baswa. For example, we are now part um, a member of um, the England Committee for Baswa on a rotational basis. 
so we can really influence national policies. Um, so Baswa has listened. Next slide. I think. Oh no. Yeah, no, is that you, Liz? And do you need me to go backwards, Rash? Yeah, 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 sorry. No problem. Yeah. Baswa has listened to us and we were invited to join the Baswa committee. No, it's not. I think I finished. I think I'm going on to something else. Yeah. Move us on. That's OK. Let's yeah. move on to this one. Yeah, no problem. Sorry. Is this me again? It's you again. Yeah, that's what I thought. So yeah. Basra has listened to us and we were invited to join the Basra England Committee meeting from August 2019. So that's about how well are we doing. From this, we felt it was necessary for um, to tell Pete Basra member um, committee what we wanted and how we wanted to engage. <coughs> and a task and finish group was set up um, from which we actually um, sent out a survey on um, to all the members of Baswa. What the survey found was we did have pockets of good production, co-production work. So Baswa is a really wide organisation and lots of different pockets of work with the work regionally, um, but nobody was necessarily aware of the policy that Liz alluded to earlier. So practice has not been shared centrally and we are still on a roadmap and have demonstrated that working alongside Baswa for people with lived experiences, we can make a difference. And the main difference for us, for me and myself and Graham especially, has been that we've been able to influence policy such as the hospital discharge policies at national levels and I feel that rather than working as individuals um, in silos and trying to impact on government policies, working alongside social workers um, gives us a better stand to make changes. Over to you, Liz. Thanks, Rash. That's great. Brilliant. OK, so um, Resh mentioned the survey and I also mentioned it earlier. So this survey was something that we carried out um, last year. And it went out to everyone that works um, with Baswa England or for Baswa England, um, just so that we can find out. We are planning for the survey to, to go out nationally as well to our other three nations, but we really wanted to focus in on what, what's happening in England in terms of the organisation. And this is what the survey told us. Um, that there was a huge value that people with lived experience bring to Baswa, and that came through from our members who are involved with the branch work, um, also our members that are involved in the thematic group work from our England committee and also from our staff group as well. So there's a real sense of the value that people um, with lived experience bring. The value, and Resh has already alluded to this and Mark has as well, that the value that being part of and working with us as an organisation brings to people with lived experience about social work also has reciprocal benefits. So it's not just a one way process that we really benefit from people's experience. People benefit from the opportunities that being involved with us as an organisation um, can offer. And Resh again alluded to one of those, which is around that ability to influence policy at a national level. Um, Co-production across the organisation, certainly in Basel, England, is experienced and viewed positively and it's felt that because we work with people with lived experience, action is taken. So there's a level of accountability there and ownership for the things that we say we'll do. We ensure that we do them because we've made that commitment to people with lived experience and families. What's needed is visibility and awareness raising about the work that we're doing across the organisation. And Resh mentioned there that there's lots of stuff going on across the organisation, but actually that may not be held centrally or known about centrally. And therefore, good practice that's happening isn't necessarily being shared across the organisation. And that's something that we need to work on. And also the perspectives of people with lived experience and carers is needed so that we can increase diversity in terms of the work that we're doing and um, the perspectives that we present. Brilliant. Going... Brilliant. 
sorry. If we pop, people can just pop themselves on mute, that would be great. Thank you. We're in, Liz. Sorry. Thanks, Neil. Bye. I think Graham's just joined oh, us, Liz. Oh, fabulous. Well, that's sorry, because I'm behind the slides. I can't see. Hooray. Welcome, Graham. Well, well I'm very sorry. It is amazing, isn't it? That the age that's taken since just quarter past, just come quarter past 10, I've been trying to get you, join oh. you. So sorry about that, everyone. Have you got all your guests with you, Liz? Yeah, we're all we're all in and we're, we're just part way through the presentation, Graham. So we'll introduce you when we've just come, gone through the rest of the Thank slides. You. That's OK. That's Great to see you. Thank you. Great to have you here. I'm so, so sorry, everyone. I'm late. Oh, that's OK. D don't worry. You're here now. That's the main thing. Te technology doesn't always work the way we want it to. So, um, OK. So just to finish off on what our survey told us. So the, there was a recognition that there's good practice going on that we need to do more to make sure that that's shared across the organisation. The benefits of, of involving people with lived experience are experienced both by Basra England and by the people involved with us. And going forward, what we need to focus on is thinking big and acting with ambition. OK, so I'm going to move us on to the next slide. And this is you, Mark. So what people with lived experience felt was that total production was enough and Membership organisation made us feel part of the best type production because we all went now where we're headed. Um, it made us feel equal and um, it made us feel that we were joint working with uh, social workers at the same time to get on to issues. And um, so that's not more, but uh, those are just four examples of how we, how we and all of us feel about working with the organisation. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. OK, so we're going to be going into our workshop activity shortly, and this involves um, answering four different questions. So what we've decided to do is um, because we're going to split you into two groups and I'll ask Graham <coughs> to introduce himself just before we do. So everybody's had the opportunity to meet Graham. So Graham and I will be staying in the main room and we'll be um, supporting you to look at questions one and three. So question one, how does co-production happen where you work? And question three, how will you overcome the challenges? <coughs> Resh, do you want to explain what's going on with um, group two and then Graham can introduce himself, please? Okay, so um, what we're gonna do is when Mark and I are in group two, we're going to look at um, what are the challenges that you might face and how might you actually encourage the application of co-production um, in our groups. And what we're going to have to do is we are going to have to ask for a volunteer from the attendees to volunteer for us to feedback two points when we come back on each question. So we are going to be doing that as well on Mark and my group. OK. Brilliant. OK, so I'm just going to come back into the screen now. I'm going to stop sharing and just bear with me one second while I come back in. Um, and I, just before we go into our breakout rooms, if Graham, you would like to introduce yourself, please, that would be great. Hello, everyone, and apologies again. I'm usually a very punctual person, but I'm very sorry about today. It is technology, but my name is Graham Price. I'm an expert by experience. I'm a totally blind person. I have to explain that because uh, it's a hidden impairment today. You wouldn't be able to tell that. And I'm an e uh, sorry, a, a, a member of Basra. Thank you. Fantastic, Graham. OK, so if by the miracle of technology, some of you will be disappearing into uh, breakout room two, room two, sorry, with Resh, Mark and Philippa. Graham and I are going to be staying in the room with some people here and we'll see you. I think, um, should we go for 15 minutes for the group exercise? I'm just having a quick look at time, just where we are on the schedule. So if we can say 15 minutes for the group exercise, is that OK, folks? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm pressing great. start now, so you should be, it's usually a little bit of a delay, okay. but you'll all just disappear and hopefully this will work. Okie dokie, brilliant. <laughs> slowly, slowly, it looks like people <laughs> are going. Right, I think people have gone. 
and I'm going to nip into that room and check that everything's okay. So okay, no problem. That's great. Thanks, Philip. We'll see you in fifteen minutes' time. Okay. Right. OK, so Graham, it's Sorry. you and I. Hello. And um, it's the people that we've got in the room. So we've got quite a few people um, in the room with us. Okay. Um, we can't see everybody. Everybody's got their cameras off at the moment, which is completely fine. If you want to pop them on, though, we're more than happy for you to do that. That would be nice to say hello. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to start having a look at Hello, got some faces coming up, which is great. Um, I'm going to just pop the questions up again so that we can have a look at those. Hello, welcome. Um, hi, <laughs> just wait for people to pop their cameras on. We'll just say a quick hello, Graham, once uh, everybody's okay. had a chance to do that. That's great. Thank you for bearing with us this morning. Great. OK, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the questions back up. So when I do this, I'm not going to be able to see who's in the room. So, Graham, are you all right to just kind of introduce what we're going to be doing in yeah, terms of the yeah. exercise? Yeah. Brilliant. OK, so I'm going to put the questions up. OK, and that's it. Let's go. OK, hey, so. OK, can I? OK, Liz, thank you. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. So that our first question is, how does co-production happen in your workplace? Be great. Uh, and just to quote what or re restate what Resh said when when we had the breakout rooms, it would be good if someone <clears throat> for, could decide to um, be the feedback person. It's much better if you're part of the action, really, isn't it? Uh, as, as in fact, in a really co-produced way. So, <laughs> uh, so it'd be great. So, and we'll have about seven and a half minutes on each question, really. So, mm -hmm. it'd be great if you could between yourselves discuss how that how that works in your workplace does it work in your place how does it work in your place mm -hmm. um and and, and how, what you feel about it working in your workplace so that's that's the first question so shall we have you know five or six minutes on that with yeah. you discussing it between yourselves and hopefully one of you will agree to be the feedback person when we yeah. meet as a bigger group okay so I'm going to come back in out of the slides. The question that we're looking at is how does co-production happen where you work, as Graham was saying. So I'm coming back in. So, yeah, it'd be great if we can have a volunteer to feedback when we come back to the main room. If someone's up for that, can you just pop it in the chat and um, and I can pick that up with you. So what we're looking for is for people to kind of give us a bit of information about how co-production works where you work. If it works, does it work well? Uh, tell us why or if not what, what what you think about how it works so anyone can come in at that point if you want to use the hand icon brilliant so Angela that's great um are you, Angela are you wanting to come in and feed in or are you happy to be the volunteer person no I wanted to, I wanted to ask a probably stupid question <laughs> no problem there's um, no such thing <laughs> no um co-production I'm not I think I know what it means, but I'm not sure if I, my understanding of what it means is the same as yours. So, what what is the ex, what does co-production mean? What is it? <laughs> same staff, well, but I'm not really clear what co-production. Should I respond to that, Liz? Yeah, you please respond okay. to that one, well, Graham. That's do, a great question. <laughs> in my view, so, sorry, is it Alexander? So, your name was sorry, Angela. Angela, thank you, Angela. Sorry, I should have picked that up, but Angela. No in my view, co-production is where you you meet you the person who you are the, the, both the provider and the server meet as equal people, right. and and decide what action to take. So it's a collaborative approach where you are where you value each other equally, and the and the voice is has significance. Now that doesn't mean that someone has more ability to deliver than the other. Because clearly a provider has what you might call a level of power, but but it is important that that the person being served has a voice, and and they feel it's valued, that's, and that is at every level really. That's really helpful because that's what I thought it meant. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure because um, what I work as a senior supervising social worker, so. Um, I actually look after foster carers, but also the service users are the young people. So there's 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 two groups of people 
that I could be sort of co-producing with. And I think mm. I think after coming just coming from Luke Rogers's um, presentation, I don't think we're doing it very well with the young people in terms oh. of our participation efforts, although okay. we are trying to do it. Yeah. We need to improve there. But I think what is working quite well is we have monthly focus groups which are, are, are on video at the moment where our small groups of foster carers meet with their supervising or senior supervising social workers um, just they choose the agenda um, we facilitate it but really we want them um, mm. to um, you know set the pace set the agenda build mm. It's about building the relationships between them all because mm. I very much always say to them, you you are the experts. If there's, mm. a, if there's a, something yes. you want to know, you're the ones mm. doing the job. Yes. Mm. And although I can support you, you probably can support each other as well. So we really, really encourage mutual support rather than just looking to me to to. Um, but Belanger, Belanger, what, what what you're pinpointing here is that it's, it's for, for often for the person receiving the service, it's new to them yeah. that they are being valued, and so their confidence has to be built that they're able to participate, mm -hmm. and 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 that you know that's a growing process. It doesn't start from day one. It starts from treating them well, properly, yes, listening to them, and then building that confidence where they become more assertive about their need. Mm. And that's when you begin to really benefit from the co-production, because from that point on, you begin to develop something that they will accept as being good for them, rather than you telling them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and, uh, and, and I think I think we're doing that well with the foster carers, but we need to do more work with the young people. The problem is with the young people; they don't often want to do that because they have their their own social workers, mm. and lot they have lots of people asking them questions. Yeah, and we are then another service coming in there, possibly duplicating what their child social workers are doing. Um, mm. and, it, and and if it it's got to be something they want to do. Mm. Angela, I'm I'm just going to come in on that because that sounds like also something around that kind of joint working with the children's social workers, so that there's and and the young people as well. So there's an agreed way of of how those things can be approached yeah. that the, the, the children can lead. Then they can decide who they want to have that conversation with, and yeah. as you were saying, yeah. when they want to have it and how they want to have it as well. And as Graham was saying, it is all about starting stripping right back to what you've been doing. And starting again, really, but involving everybody that, that, that needs to be involved, yeah. I think. I think there's the organisation level also, there, also, though. You, the um, other thing, Andrew, I think is important is try to engage, try to encourage them to engage, at, even at the level at which where you begin to decide the policies you're going to adopt. In other words, you shouldn't really be deciding policies you're no, going to adopt no, without no. some input from them. Mm. Yeah. Because, oh, yes. But yeah. initially, they are unable to really yeah. contribute to that. Yeah. But it's a matter... As I say, once they feel valued and yeah. there's a rapport built, it's amazing what can be achieved. Yeah, yeah. We, we have. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Angela. I've got um, Jackie wanting to come in with a hand up as well. I'm just conscious of time. No, if, I if will. That's uh, okay. <laughs> could you hold that thought? And if there's a question, Thank could you. you pop it in the chat for us? That would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Did you want to just come in on on the points you wanted to raise there? Yeah. Sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. So um, I was just inter very interested by, by what um, you were all saying, and I've just done um, a p first bit of f facilitation work in terms of looking at co-production and how a group could co-produce. It, it was a group of young people, care experienced young people and the staff. And I was interested just by what you were saying, Graham, because what it started out as was the staff very much leading the group. Now, my my kind of um, questions and queries were is how you can do a co-production piece of work from the very get-go mm. with both parties having a, a, an input in agenda decision making mm. you have to have maybe somebody that's the lead but mm. how that's kind of agreed and decided and what I found was the battle a bit like what Angela was saying but what yes. I found was the battle of 
not gain it's not about we're used to gaining the views mm. from service users or from people um and asking for their opinion um because it ticks a box mm -hmm. when we're talking about co-designing or co-production we're talking about something different mm -hmm. and I think that crossover seemed to be in my first piece of work was the, the struggle about actually not staff leading something but actually being really recognizing that this is co-production this is you know both parties trying to come together mm. to have a way forward and respecting mm. one another it still felt mm. that the staff needed to dominate that mm. and I just wondered from your experience you know ways around that really mm. exactly it's very interesting because in a sense what you've done is taken us to the second question here. yes, oh, sorry. yes. One of the no that's fine <laughs> Yeah, it's great. I mean, because that's led very well. And also, we should be there because that's that. unfortunate. I mean, this is a great forum to have a really good discussion about what it really means. And what it really means, it's, it is not easy. It's not easy, in, in, but we've sort of come to it slowly and in, to some extent being dragged into it. Uh, because what we're finding is it's the only way to be to re really deliver successful tr um, remedies for people or treat or support for people. People will go along with what what the, what we all know is good and they know is good for them. But if, if they feel they've been part of the process of devising it, so it's, it has to be a collaboration. And we know. And but you're right, Jackie. To an extent, you have to have some level of. Um, of a boundary here. You have to have some sort of indication of what it is you're aiming for, and then decide how best to get there. And when when you were speaking, I was thinking, well, what we've got to do is not see it as them and us, mm. but we've got to see it much more in terms of we as a group of people wanting the, the same outcome. And in truth, if we're really professional people, we do want the same outcome. Mm. We don't want our work to be wasted. And we want the young or the older people, because I'm a much older person, but young in the head. But um, mm. but, but in truth, so it, it isn't an easy process. And, 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 you know, I mean, I sit on the clinical commissioning group and um, for my local authority. And, and it's, you know, there's still a tendency to tell you what they're doing. And you keep saying, hang on, we'd like to be part of you de deciding what it is you should be doing. Mm. It's not an easy process, but you know when you start thinking, well, even if you get, you know, get on your, you know, all four pins as it were, you know, your, your, your hands and knees as it were, and play, mm. you know, so you're part of them. You know, mm. it's part of this building confidence to enable people to feel one of you, or and you're one of them. So it completely joins them together. It's not easy, but it, but it has to be worked out because it's a good thing to achieve. Thank you, Jackie and Graham for that. Well, I can see somebody else has got their hand up um, here. So I'm just going to go to this person as well, because I'm just conscious of the time that we've got left. So that's moved us on to question three, which is around what challenges uh, we face when we're trying to look and think about co-production. So Sim, uh, I'm going to just attempt to pronounce it, and I really apologise if I get this wrong the first time. So Siman Ganiso. Yeah, hi. Hi. Yes, that is fine. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. So uh, I'm sitting with my grumpy child, so I can't put my camera on. Uh, no problem. No problem. Please uh, come in and, and uh, yeah. ask what you so, like. Uh, so I, I, I work in adult social care with the, in the older people's team. I'm a social yeah. worker. Yeah. And um, the, the way we are trying to make co-production work is we are moving away from the prescriptive care provision of old and trying to focus more on, on the strengths of our clients and focusing more on what the individual wants to achieve, what are their personal outcomes, not what we think they need. It's mm. Like before we'd go in and say, oh, you're not managing your personal care, so you need carers to come and wash you. But is that what the person wants? So we're mm. trying to create this relationship to find out what do you want to achieve when your day um, mm. starts? What do you wake up and do? You want to wash, what do you do after washing? What mm. are the things that are important to you as an individual, not mm. what we think you need? Mm -hmm. And um, like, like Graham said earlier, it's, it, it's, it's bound to meet with some bits of resistance because mm. especially with the older folk, they're, they're used to being told, 
by authority in folks yeah. what to do and mm. what, what what they need. So they are not keen to move towards there. They're like, why don't you just tell me what I need? But trying mm. to shift the relationship to say, you know, it's all about you and we're just here to support you. You're the best person to tell us what works yeah. for you, what's important for you. So yeah. we need to create that relationship of trust so they can have confidence in the work that we're doing to support them. But Simon, I, you, I hear yes. you perfectly, and it's a great, it's a great uh, um, question really you're posing here, uh, in that there is a tendency for some people to feel a bit dependent upon what they call the expert, mm -hmm. and 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 so they 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 don't feel they can add to that. They don't think they add value to that. They they think, oh well, it's your job to tell me what you know what's good for me. But what we have, what we've got in mind, shift here, haven't we? And in truth, I would absolutely, almost categorically state that even though that person is still dependent upon you telling them, they love being asked. <laughs> and certain they value being asked, and slowly they'll get to the point where they feel their voice has value because you value it, mm. and then you begin, you build a good rapport, a good relationship, and that's when things really gel. And believe me, everyone gets a lot of satisfaction from that. Thank you. Thanks both. I think we're going to be expecting the main group to be rejoining us any moment. So I've got really quickly today. Um, but if people have got any other thoughts or points that they'd like to share, you can see people coming back into the room now. Hello, everybody. <coughs> if you have got any other points, um, we didn't like get any warning. We didn't get any warning. <laughs> Oh, dear, you've been cut off my flow. Resha did put something in the chat that oh, I was going to call you back. Okay. So sorry. Oh, oh well, well, welcome back. The time's gone really quickly for us, as I'm sure it has for, for the rest of the group. So what I'd just like to say is if people have got things that they wanted to contribute but didn't get the opportunity to in, in, the, in the groups, please do use the chat because it's really important that we hear from you and we really want to hear your ideas and your questions as well. So just, just remember you've got that option. OK. I'm going to go back into um, sharing my screen and we're going to get some feedback from the groups now. So we're going to use something called dun, 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 Jamboard, if I can uh, bring it up. Let me just uh, have a quick look there. Now uh, then, is it there? Yes, fantastic, great stuff. So um, what we're going to be doing is just getting some feedback from each of the groups. Um, so I don't know, Graeme, if you want to feedback or anyone from group one, I can't see because I'm behind the screen now. Okay. So um, um, did, did anyone, would, would someone come forward? But we didn't actually get, oh yes, uh, was Angela going to feedback? No, I think Jack, Jackie, but I think she might have said that she wanted to come in on the ask a question rather than feedback. feedback. Does, does anybody, would, would it, I'm very sorry about that. because I don't ask. mind feeding back. Oh, fabulous. That's great. Thank so the you. question, that's great, uh, Jackie. The question um, is around how does co-production happen where you work? Uh, do I have to do anything with a sticky note? Or? No, I'm going to do that, Jackie. You, you just talk away and I'll type away. How's about that? Okay, so we, we, we spoke about how we um, kind of balance um, the discussions that we have um, in the co-production. Um, um, so we were talking about sometimes it's easier to engage one group than maybe another group. Yeah. Um, and how we can equally uh, do that is what we spoke about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We spoke about, um, you know, how we ask people what is it that they think that they need you know to to get that generating that discussion um and equally engaging across the groups um really... and we spoke about joint working um yeah. you know that really been an emphasis yes i'll just capture that last point that's brilliant jackie thank, thank, you. thank you very you, much jackie. for that thank you okay i'll just capture that joint working okay my spelling's terrible. No prizes there for me. OK, thank you very much, Jackie. So we're going to go to group two now. So question two was all about thinking about co-production where you work. What are the challenges that you might face? So who's going to feed back on that? Catherine is. Catherine's That's great. Hi, yeah. Hi. We kind of, our two questions did merge a bit. So I'll, no I'll, um, so with regards to um, challenges, we we um, one person shared their experience. They work with care leavers, um, and that actually sometimes um, young people have had enough already or have had bad experiences. So um, trying to turn them into a positive 
is sometimes yes. challenging to get to get them on board. Um, yes. We talked about how, from my perspective, um, a challenge has been uh, working within child protection and actually the, it being the social workers that are resistant to oh. the participation of um, parents that have also been involved with them um, in proceedings. Okay. Um, yeah. We then yeah. talked about um, somebody else shared that actually getting people together to talk is the easy bit, and yeah. that actually sometimes it's taking the actions forward and um, that's difficult, yeah. um, especially if they don't if they don't marry together. Um, mm. That yeah. people have different agendas. We talked about that and. Yeah. Um, and then there was a, a large discussion, which I don't know whether it kind of falls into this, the next question, but was that we had a large discussion around what actually co-production means yes. and how the term is very much used differently with different um, meanings behind it. And it's become a, a bit of a buzzword. <clears throat> and that um, if we aren't able to have a shared understanding, um, then that can obviously be a huge challenge if we yeah. if, if we've all got um yeah a different perspective of what we're actually trying to achieve and and what what it does what it does mean thank you that's brilliant that's absolutely brilliant yeah we had that discussion as well which was all about um okay Sorry, just wait for that. Yeah, we had that discussion too about what are we, what do we mean by co-production? What are we talking about? Have we got a shared understanding? And I think that is really important that, that that's one of the points that we'll come on to talk about that we kind of focus on in our group is how we create, um, you know, the conditions for that shared understanding to, to take place really. So thank you for that. That's great. Okay. Um, question three was back to us. Uh, group uh, one. So we're talking about the challenges now, aren't we? Yeah, we're talking about the challenges. Uh, right. would, and would Angela like to feed back on that? Because uh, we had a good discussion about that, didn't we? Mm. Angela, are you happy to feed back on that, on some of the challenges? If not, I will. But um, okay, shall I do so? Yeah, if you do. Okay, okay that's fine. Great. Thank well, you. Well, 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 we had a very good discussion about this because it is a very interesting, uh, you know, to take the point made by the person feedbacking, and I'm ever so sorry I can't recall your name um, for for the for, from group two, um, who said, you know, this buzzword and and what does it really mean? And of course, and that is the challenge. What does it mean? Because there's been a tendency for what we might call dependency, where where people expect to be told how they're going to be treated or served or whatever and and it's breaking that sort of barrier really where where we value them equally mm. and 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 then of course how do you move forward from this business of where people um still expect you to be you know the provider and the doer um and but what we what we broke down in the end was well quite frankly even though people might start there the fact that they value, the, the fact that you ask them begins to break down that dependency or, mm. or if you like, their, their habit of expecting yeah. something. Yeah. And, and, and that then begins to really get a rapport building where the, where the co-production is, uh, is enabled. Mm. And um, so it was a very good discussion we had around, around the challenges that we face in, in ensuring people knew the way you were dealing with this and the strength space is, is quite an interesting approach really anyway uh, i think i've said enough unless anyone wants to add to that this in the last couple of minutes um we uh, we have uh, spoke about uh, uh, group of three we spoke i'm um, moving on to the to the end this um yeah, that's fine, Mark. Thank we're you. The we're the group part, part that we brought a genuine perspective, a live person perspective, and certainly from my perspective, I was a constant in in uh, in um, in the subgroup that I work with. Professional officers come and go, yeah. um, members come and go, but I found myself to be the history of one of certainly of one of the groups that I work with at Bandit. So, yeah. so, so that is also the value of services. Um, it takes 
we are tend to be the ones that stay the longest. So that's a Thank you, Mark. You're always there. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Mark. That is a really important point about how you carry the history of the group and yeah. and, and then you can kind of set the tone really for um, how co-production kind of continues and takes place. So thank you very much for that. Are there any other comments from group four? Sorry. Uh, were, Catherine, did you want to say them or did you want me to? Uh, I don't mind. I, I did. I, I don't want me to just say about, um, we talked about, um, there was a question around it, who who leads and um, around whether there needs to be like an organisational commitment mm -hmm. um, and that actually a big part of that is around setting the principles um, and organisations understanding mm -hmm. that um, somebody, I can't remember, sorry, who said it, apologies, but that actually, although it might take more time and might be more costly, that you need mm -hmm. to see the value in it and um, that you meet, you meet an actual need rather than perceived need, and I, I thought that that was quite um, a profound comment. Actually, that is very, very um, important that everybody needs to hold on to, but it does need authority buy-in. Yeah, thank yeah. you for that. It was about how culture change, Liz. Yes, what we've been through. How can culture change, driven by service users. Um, and there's been small pockets again. People have started small pockets, for example co-producing a website might be an example of a way to start. Yeah, yeah. Um, co-producing a mentoring scheme. Yeah, brilliant. Great. I'll sort the spelling out later, folks, but thank you for that. There's some fantastic ideas and uh, really mm. rich um, discussions there in the very short time that we had. So thank you, everybody, for contributing to that. And if you do have any more ideas that you'd like to share with us, then please put those in the chat because we'd be happy to receive those. OK, so we're just coming mm. on to our close now. So I'm I just going to slide 12. I want to slide 12. Yeah, if you just want to um, take us to that, Graham, that would be great. Okay, I'll just 12, share my screen. Please. Yeah. OK, well, may I say thank you to everyone who's participated today. It has been a really, really valuable experience for all of us. I hope you've got had value from it as well. But thank you. We will now take the points you've raised or you'll leave in, your, in the chat for us that Liz will collect. And it will certainly inform how we, a Baswa, the service users and the officers, move forward in, in developing co-production. So thank you very much indeed. Thanks, Graham. So we're just going to finish on a key message and then just a quick Mentimeter to, to send us on our way. So um, Resh, yours is the first key message that you wanted to share about co-production. I think you've already shared it a couple of times. Yeah. But one of the best things about working, um, I sometimes call it partnership, but working alongside Baswa, side by side, is I'm able to support a genuine perspective and help bring what I really want to bring into reality. I've got empathy for the social workers, but it shows that it's also grounded in reality when social workers say they empathise with us. Thanks, Resh. Graham, you're next, please. Okay. Well, I'm an old, uh, uh, bl blind older person who brought up in care and cared for my late wife. So I have a very rich wealth of knowledge and, and experience of working with social workers. It's been a reciprocal uh, relationship. And in this sharing, I'm able to say I give a lot and I learn a lot and I find it very exciting. Thanks, Graham. And Mark, from your Did perspective? I, I already mentioned it in a workshop because of time constraints. So, that, uh, so I, uh, you can see it on the slide, but I said that I was always a constant in the group. Yes. The history of the group. Um, so, yeah. And, um, yeah so that's the value that I, I felt that I personally been the organisation and the, that subgroup. Brilliant. Thank you very much, um, all three. OK, so to close today's session, we just want to know, um, after the short time that we spent together using Mentimeter again, if you type the code 
double two double seven how do you feel now after the workshop about co-production and you can choose one or two words to illustrate how you feel and it'd be great if everybody in the room can take part in that because that will create something that we can share and um share with you after the session and uh that we can take forward as well so one or two words just to describe how you feel now after the workshop about co-production thank you Fabulous. So I'll just uh, read those out. We've got some more informed, inspired, um, inspired to come up a few times so far, inspired to engage. It's essential. We've got there. Hopeful and more informed. Just wait for it. I know we've got quite a few people in the room, so it'd be great if everybody takes part. Got some other comments coming in there. Positive. Great. Inspired again has come up there. So we've got inspired, informed, engaged. Just give it another minute or so just to let everybody have the opportunity. It'd be great for everybody that's in the room to have a go at this. It just helps us, I think, when we're thinking about taking the work forward. OK. OK, well, if people do want to contribute, that's the code. That would be great if you do. Um, I think the comments that we've had there really, really um, help us to understand where we're at in our journey of co-production. And all that remains now is to say a huge thank you to you all. And uh, thank you for listening and taking part today. It's been great for us and we've really appreciated your time and contribution. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Hi, Liz, Graham, Hi. Fresh and Mark. Thank you so much for a great interactive. I think we've covered every bit of tech today. <laughs> Meant to meet the jam board, breakout rooms. <laughs> And I think the fact that we've got to the end is a credit to everyone. So well yeah. done, everyone, for engaging in that session. Um, a true um, reflection of co-production. And Graham, I'm so pleased you were able to join us. And I do apologise <laughs> yeah. for the challenge in not of, having you I'm with us at the beginning. I, also, I've dressed nicely for you. Oh, I know. But <laughs> I don't want that to go to waste. <laughs> but how amazing that you were able to join us at the end. For those yeah. of you that are still with us, um, we have got Joe um, has put a survey. I know there's another other thing to do but we would appreciate your feedback you know it's really important this is the first time we've put on social work week and you know it's, we're really um, pleased that Bazza have been able to join us so we'd really welcome your formal feedback so if you've got the energy to put in some extra feedback we'd really <laughs> welcome that um, and obviously any social workers who are on the call um, please be uh, you know mindful that this is a really good thing to sort of reflect on and think about and perhaps use as your CPD mm -hmm. thinking about how maybe you you can take them think about how we work with people and use that notion of co-production whatever that may be mean to you and it, I think it's really interesting that it does create there is still um, mixed view about what co-production means and that mm. definition and some people don't want a definition mm. do they mm. so but I'd just like to say thank you once more Resh, Mark, Graham and Liz great session and thanks very much to everybody else and um um, Sally has put in a link. We've got a national advisory forum session this afternoon, which is also right. about co-production in with Social Work England. So if there are you can still book on. So the links in the chat. So please feel free to join us. Thanks so Fantastic. much, everybody. Thank Have you, us, everyone. Thank enjoy you the rest Neil, of the day. Your, uh, thanks. Thank you, Neil, your technical person for helping me get on eventually. Oh, thanks, Graham. Thanks. You take care, everyone.